Hello and welcome back to this series on new games for the BBC Micro, or I should say the Acorn Electron, because in this episode we're looking at another game from Zero X Code, who is an Acorn Electron fanboy, self-proclaimed, and he has written this game for the Acorn Electron, but it will also run on a Beeb. It's an elegant rendition of the classic Japanese game Sokoban. Um, this game originally came out in Japan in 1982, where it was very popular, uh, but it probably became more famous in the West a little bit later on in 1988 after its publication by Spectrum Holobyte. It came out for the C64, MS-DOS, and indeed the Apple II. Now, this game has been written to run perfectly on an Electron and also on a Beeb. Uh, you can get the disk image freely available from Zero X Code's GitHub repository, uh, although of course if you do feel like giving him a donation as well, there's a link to his Ko-Fi uh, if you want to say thank you for this excellent game. Uh, and you can play it on an emulator like BBEM, which is what I'll be doing for the actual video review, or if you really want to get that feel for what the game would play like on the original hardware, you can of course pop it on a flash drive and stick it into your GoTech if you've got one, and hook it up to a Beeb or an Electron, just like I've done here. But as I say, uh, for this review I'm going to use my emulator because it's much better for getting uh, clear video footage. And so without further ado, let's take a look at Sokoban from Zero X Code. Okay, let's start it up. And here we are, Sokoban. Nice title screen here. And you can see the reference to Spectrum Holobyte, uh, the ASCII Corporation, and uh, as you can see there, the Elk and Beeb version, 0.3. Copyright 2023 from Zero X Code. As I say, it came out just this week. Uh, now the controls are fairly simple and you've actually got two options. So you can use the traditional ZX uh, colon and forward slash for uh, left, right, up and down. Uh, or you can use C, V, K and M uh, if that is more to your liking. If you like your keys to be slightly closer together. So without further ado, let's start. So it is a puzzle game. Uh, this is not a fast paced action sort of, uh, sort of game. It's a very gentle... Um, mental puzzle, basically. Uh, you are this chap here, or chap or chapess, I'm not sure, um, and uh, they're working in some kind of warehouse, and those diamonds on the right-hand side, uh, you need to get all of these crates, basically, onto those diamonds to complete each level. Now, there are 50 levels in total. Um, obviously, the main aim is to complete each level, but you can also see at the top there that each time I step, uh, my moves increase by one, and um, I've also got uh, the number of pushes, so each time I push against a crate, obviously, that uh, will... Uh, go down by one as well. So the purpose of the game, as I say, is to try and get the crates into those diamonds, and ideally you want to do it with as few moves as possible, um, but uh, obviously that uh, takes second fiddle for me to just completing the level, because uh, that's that's really what, uh, what I enjoy. I think I'd have to play um, so much of the game um, to complete all 50 levels to really start thinking about completing all 50 levels with the fewest number of moves, but um, like another favourite game of mine, Imogen, uh, that does start to become a challenge, obviously, the more that you play a game. Now, as it only came out this week, uh, I have not played it uh, extensively, but uh, certainly enough to, um, first of all, <laughs> develop a real liking for it, and uh, therefore wanting to make a review, but also uh, enough to get through, I think, I think I've got through the first six levels so far, uh, from the sort of a little amount that I've played up to now. Um, little by my standards, which means obviously still quite a few hours, but uh, yeah, um, enough, as I say, to make a decent amount of progress. So this first level is not too tricky, um, but as with all levels uh, in Sokoban, really you only have to make one wrong move and you will scupper yourself um, for the re for the rest of the, of the level and essentially you have to restart. So um, I have to be careful because I'm obviously talking and playing at the same time, I am liable to make mistakes, so I just need to be on my guard against that. But uh, I think we're, we're uh, pretty good here for this first level. As you can see, I've managed to get uh, all of those boxes bar one. Um, I like how they turn yellow, by the way, uh, once you get them to, uh, to the right place. So we'll just push this one across here, and that lines it up nicely at that crossroads down there. And then I can push it uh, towards victory. And you get a nice little jingle uh, when you complete a level. There you go, awesome, space for next level, so off we go. And uh, it continues. Now, the the difficulty of these levels is, is very subtle, um, and probably the first thing that you really have to do is get an idea of exactly what your gameplay is going to be for completing the level, because um, there may or may not be more than one way to do it, but 
as I say, if you make one false move, uh, it's really curtains for you. So you have to you have to be very careful about what that first move looks like. Now in this level, uh, I'm just trying to remember from when I played this before, uh, we need to create a path, uh, obviously, to those diamonds over in the top left there. Um, but what you mustn't do is push any of these blocks so that they go too close against the wall. Because if you do that, you then can't you can't move them, um, you can't move them away uh, from the wall. There's no uh, you know bounce box uh, of any kind. So it's really a case of just making sure that you leave enough space around the boxes to be able to manoeuvre them. So um, this avenue here is too tight at the moment for me to be able to get boxes through. Because if I push any of these boxes into it, I'm not going to have any space, obviously, to manoeuvre. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go up here, move this one gently over here. And then leaving gaps is very important to leave gaps because you need uh, you need to create a path. As you can see here, I've now got a path that allows me to get a crate uh, into this uh, diamond area, diamond enclosure. Now I like to push my crates all the way up to the sort of furthest edges of that diamond enclosure. Um, it's not necessarily something you have to do, but I I find that by doing that, I don't then have to worry about potentially getting you know the last box into that enclosure and finding that I haven't got enough manoeuvrability to to get it into the uh, the relevant space. But uh, here we go. I think uh, my path is is definitely working out for me here. So um, I've got good manoeuvrability for all of these crates on the uh, the top right because I can obviously basically follow the same pattern each time. Um, now, as I say, maybe there are better uh, strategies for completing this level that involve fewer moves because obviously my uh, strategy here involves a lot of back and forth because each time I push the uh, the box into that crossroads area, I then have to double back on myself uh, in order to come back round again and uh, and get the crate over into uh, the enclosure, but uh, it works for me. And as I say, my my <laughs> my chief goal in uh, in this game is to just be able to complete the level. So I think I can continue to recycle uh, my path in order to get uh, the crate into the right place. Now, one thing I have um, discovered whilst playing the game is that. A lot of the thinking um, takes place, at least in the early levels, I mean, I'm sure it differs once you get to some of the later levels, but certainly in the early levels, a lot of the thinking is done at the start when you basically try to plan your uh, your strategy. And once you've, once you've got an idea of how it's going to go, um, notwithstanding obviously any making any false moves by accidentally pushing a box too far, um, the remainder of the level is really sort of spent in, it's almost... <laughs> I hesitate to say a sort of zen-like state of, of just enjoying the completion of the level. That's kind of how I see it. It's like, well, yes, you know, you know what you've got to do, um, but the sort of the really the, the the next thing is to just almost enjoy the act of completing it. Um, there's something quite peaceful and just almost sort of let your thoughts sort of meander as you as you as you play the game and complete the level um, as I say personally I, I it has a lot to recommend it for, for me I'm not a huge fan of fast-paced action games largely because my reflexes are just not what they used to be um, but uh, yeah they can be a little bit stressful uh, if I'm honest at times and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for a puzzle I do love a puzzle all sorts of puzzles not just computer puzzles I'm I like jigsaw puzzles, I like crossword puzzles, uh, basically give me a puzzle um, and I'm, I'm happy. You probably noticed a couple of Rubik's puzzles uh, on the top of my beeb actually, I've been trying my hand at some of those recently. Um, I'm rubbish at them by the way, so don't ask me how to solve a Rubik's Cube because I, I don't actually know. Um, and it's a shameful confession to make but I haven't actually managed to solve my Rubik's Cube yet but I'm, I'm making progress with it so uh, you never know. You might. The more times that Rubik's Cube shows up in future videos, you might see it in sort of getting closer and closer towards completion. But uh, there we go. For those of you familiar with uh, Rubik's Cube strategies, I've, I've managed to complete the daisy stage, um, but not, not, not much beyond that. Anyway, enough about the Rubik's Cube. This is not a video about Rubik's Cubes. This is a video about Sokoban. But it, uh, it shows you what I mean about how once you've kind of got your strategy in place, as I have here, your, your, your mind does tend to wander but in a very pleasant way as you as you just carry out the task it's like a very pleasant uh, form of as it say work because it is a game obviously but it yeah it's uh, it's it's essentially a, a, a someone's job in a warehouse at the end of the day 
Right, now we're on to level three here. Um, just wasting moves, walking left and right there. But that, that's actually how I tend to think. Actually, I tend to pace. So I, yeah, I know, I'm, I, know I shouldn't do that because it's obviously eating up moves for no, for no reason. But uh, there you go, that's, that's just how I am. Now, if I think about how this is going to work, we need to be careful not to push any of these boxes into a position where it's not going to be possible to move them again. But I think... I think I can safely move that one over there. And then if we get this, this will, if we start to clear a path into the area, so if we just get this one lodged over there. Um, now, I think I can probably get away with, yes, that one can go over there, I think, for now. So I can get this one in, um, which gets that nice and tidied away over into the side. And now, what should we do now? Now, must not t t uh, give in to the temptation of pushing this box to the left, because if you push that into a corner, you never get it out. And likewise with this one, I can't push that one left. So it's likely that these boxes, well, almost certainly, will need to move rightwards, but with me on the other side of them once that, once that happens. So, let me think. How am I going to get these boxes around? So I could push this one to the left... And then I would, the only way I'm going to be able to get round to it is if I can somehow then get to the other side. Hmm. But if I push this box up to the top, I'm then not going to have a way of getting it out again. Hmm. Now, what about these ones? No, because I don't have a method of getting round to the other side. That's really the sticking point here. I need to be able to find a way of getting around the other side. So let's see, can I... If... Ooh... All right, let me think before I push that one all the way down. If I push that all the way down, the problem is that other box over on the right-hand corner is going to block me from getting on the other side of it. So let me think. If I push this one to the left, at least temporarily, does that help? Yeah. This is one of the great things about the game, by the way. You, you sort of sit here strategizing, thinking, well, you know, if I make a wrong move... I'll have to restart the whole level again. Um, not that I've made a huge amount of progress in this one just yet, but nevertheless, you don't like to have to repeat things if you don't have to. Um, I'm not sure if I've boxed my ah, boxed myself in. Pardon the pun there. If I push that to the left, and then... Uh, or maybe I could put all of them in a... Can I push all of those into, a, into one long column on the left? Uh, but then again, I don't know if that's actually going to make any difference, is it? Because I, I still haven't managed to get these ones down. Okay, let's see. Let's... All right. Maybe the problem is this one. If I get that... No, you see, I still... That's still a... Hmm. Yeah, no, okay. Let's move this one over here. And push that one just up there. All right. And if I move that one over there, is that... Hmm, I don't know if that's necessarily the wisest course of action, but it does free this one up, so, you know, let's let's take that victory while it's available to us. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Right, now I should be able to get this one, because I've got a nice little path going on here. So I can come down here. Yeah, so that's going to be able to free up uh, quite a few of those, uh, that long column there. So let's do the same with this one. Because now I can get that one out of the way. Let's push that one down here. All right. I really hope that I haven't made any bad moves earlier on that are going to get to the point where I don't manage to get the last ones in. But so far, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I can get this one out now. Just pop this one over this way. Pop it over here. All right. Five left now. Hmm. Oh. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, I think I might have. I think I might have run out of moves. Yeah, because if I push that one up, that I can't. That's just going to create a diagonal. Likewise. In the, oh, I, no, I can't. I can't. Can I? Because I can't get round the other side of it. Oh. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, I don't think I... Bleh. I don't think... I, <laughs> I don't 
think there's a way out. I definitely can't push this one that way because that will box it up in the corner and then you can't get it out again. This one can't move without this one obviously moving out of the way. And then with both of these two, the only option I've got is to push one or other of them up. And I don't... Th yeah, that doesn't help me. I mean, if I push that up, I've got... Like, that doesn't, doesn't do anything. Definitely can't push that one. And if I push that one, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. All right, well... One of the generous things about this game is if you hit escape, it actually preserves the level that you got to. So you can see there that it still says level 3, which means that if I if I hit space, I can actually start level 3 again. Which, I, as I say, I think is pretty generous of Zero X Code to do that because, let's face it, a lot of 8-bit uh, games back in the day, if you made a, one false move, that's it. Back to the beginning for you. But uh, not so here. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I did when I completed this earlier. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? I think rather than uh, make you sit through another attempt on level 3, what I will do is apply a little bit of creative editing and we'll just pretend that you saw me complete this one and we'll go on to level 4. So, bear with me. Okay, and as if by magic we're on level 4. Um, anyway, the, after all, these reviews are definitely not meant to be walkthroughs because I hope that anyone watching these, uh, well, this particular review, will want to go, go away and download this game immediately and uh, start playing it themselves. And certainly um, I don't want to be giving away all the secrets of how you complete the levels. I mean, not that there's a lot of danger of that, of that happening because, well, it's me. Um, but nevertheless... Um, I am hoping that I can demonstrate uh, the uh, the particular sort of strategy that you need for a level like this one. Um, basically, the, with with this level, the trick is to clear out the room closest to where all of these diamonds are as much as you can, and then you can use this room as a manoeuvrability room for boxes in the other rooms, and then the ones that are end up left in this room, you effectively um, use well, you, you you make use of the earlier rooms to uh, push the boxes back out of the room, turn them around, and then come back in again. So it's quite a quite a nifty uh, nifty little strategy. But uh, the first thing you need to do uh, is make sure that you clear out uh, as many of the boxes in this uh, room that's closest to the diamond storage area as possible, because that gives you the greatest amount of manoeuvring space uh, for the boxes in some of the other rooms. So uh, we're getting a, a good a good inroad into these crates now, and uh, yes, hopefully that will see us see us right for the later crates that we need to deal with. Um, the game itself, as I understand it, has been written I think in I want to say mode one. Uh, it's definitely not a mode two game, um, but uh, yes, it's a very. I, I personally think it's a very Oh, I used the word actually in the introduction, elegant. It does look really elegant. I think that the graphics in particular, they just... I don't know, there's something about them that looks really, really attractive to me. It's, they're simple, but but very clear and crisp. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the way that this has been illustrated. I think it's, it's a really good, really good job. And I like the sort of top-down look. Um, some variations of Soccer Band have a sort of... A slightly peculiar top down but with a two dimensional character sort of uh sort of standing there which i i don't know it slightly ruins the effect for me but this i think is brilliant because the the, the top down sort of bird's eye view i think works particularly well and uh yes i'm i'm big uh, big fan of what zero x code has done there in terms of how he's chosen to actually lay out the game and and, and as i say illustrate it uh I really don't have much in, in the way of criticism, as you know. I, I mean, I generally tend to review games that I that I like. I'm not I'm not a big fan of the idea of reviewing games that you don't have anything nice to say about. As I don't really personally see the point in that. But um, if I was going to pick out anything about the game where I think oh it would have been nice if uh, I suppose some sound. Uh, I imagine there's probably not a lot of memory left over, particularly if you're if you're running this on an Electron, to be able to support um, a lot in the way of sound. And to be honest, I'm actually relieved that there isn't a sound effect of either the, the footsteps or indeed the crates being moved, because honestly, some of the games uh, that, that came out for the Beeb and the Electron made rather too much use of uh, the old um, white noise effect and uh, yeah listening to too much of that can be a bit of a drag 
Now, here's what I meant about using the earlier rooms to your advantage. So I, what I basically need to do here is push this box out, turn it round, well, turn myself around, I should say, and then push it back in again. And that helpfully means that you can then get the crate uh, into the right position. So that's uh, that's... That's how it works. Uh, it took me a little while to figure that one out. I'm sure some of you watching this think, well, isn't that obvious? But, you know, I, 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 I took my time. And uh, once I actually figured it out, uh, I was, I was quite, quite pleased that uh, I'd uh, actually worked it out. I have not looked up any um, walkthroughs or anything like that. In fact, I'm not even sure uh, how closely these levels are modelled on uh, any of the, I say, original levels from other... Uh, versions of Zuckerban. Uh, I don't know if they are um, entirely original designs or if they, as I say, if they've been modelled on um, other levels. But regardless, I haven't gone looking for any hints or walkthroughs uh, because, well, when it comes to puzzle games, I personally just really enjoy playing them and I like solving them for myself. And I'm not overly uh, keen on just you know reading up how to solve something for the sake of. I'm not going to say I never do it because there are some games out there where I yeah, I get to a point where I think well. I don't know if I'll ever uh, manage to solve this without at least some hit, uh, hints and tips. And, you know, I think back to the days of micro user and I certainly used, um, you know, some of the hints that were made available in the magazine back then to, to solve uh, various games like Palace of Magic, I think I've mentioned before. Okay, now, I uh, don't think I want to move that box here just yet because there's not quite enough manoeuvrability in this other room. So let's move that out of the way. And then that gives me a nice free passage uh, for this box here, which I can uh, ease gently into the yellow room, which is filling up very nicely. It's a real sense of achievement uh, once you you know start seeing all of those boxes lining up uh, or turning yellow. It's uh, yeah, it's a nice feeling, right? And I keep wanting to move that box. I, I don't at the moment. I don't need to move that one because what I really need to focus on is clearing enough space in the room underneath it to give me enough manoeuvrability later on to be able to move that box. And that's the key. You need to clear out as much space as uh, as you can uh, in order to do it. Now. If you were trying to solve this in as few moves as possible, you can see I've racked up 784, 85, 86. Um, it, it's possible that uh, you know you might actually um, be able to do the level more quickly and with fewer moves without necessarily clearing out all of a, a given room. Um, I'm sure that there is a formula for the sort of minimal minimal space that you need for manoeuvring a box, but uh, as I say. If it works, it works, and uh, that's that's really what I'm shooting for here, is I want to be able to complete the level, because the satisfaction for me is on basically getting to the next level in any given game. Right, and we're doing really well here. I've just got to move these last three, so I'm going to clear this one out of here, so that completely frees up uh, the, the room that I start in, which is what I need, because... And once I've got this one over into our storage area in the warehouse, over here. And just pop that up slightly so that it's out of the way. There we go. Right, so what I can do now uh, is I can... Oh, wait, no. Ah, no, don't do this one yet. No. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, I was doing so well. Uh, once again, my fat fingers have got the better of me there, and I've pushed it too far into the corner, which was silly because I was only one box away from completing it. But there you go. I think you get the idea. Um, if I hadn't done that, I would have been able to obviously first of all deal with this box, which I'm currently moving. And having got that one out of the way, I would have then had enough space below in order to push that last box into the room and uh, obviously complete the level. But uh, I've now <laughs> managed to perfectly squash it into a corner there, which um, was very silly and uh, not, not something I should have done. But anyway, as I say, I think you have got the, uh, the picture. It's a really, really good fun game. If you like puzzle games as I do, then I mean, this is a must. You must go and uh, download this and, and give it a try because as obviously a lot of um, coding effort has gone into it. It's a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant game. Um, and I think it's been rendered really, really well for the for the B band, indeed for the Electron as well. 
So there you are, that's Sokoban from Zero X Code. As I say, freely available to download, but uh, if you do decide to download it and play it and, and you enjoy it as much as me, uh, do also consider a little tip for Zero X Code because I'm sure that that will encourage him to keep making more games like this. Um, I, I love every game that he's released so far and uh, I hope that I will be reviewing a few more of them in the future. But until then, um, I hope you've enjoyed this and that you'll join me for the next video in the series. Goodbye.